duked it out here in the lower bracket. Who will continue on through? Game number three, B and Viper. It's an Abbasid mirror matchup on Lipany. So much on the line. If you lose this game, you're out. You're still having a solid performance. Fifth, six. You're on course to make it to the top eight where the big, big money is lying in the end. But if you make it through, you're already setting yourself up so much better. You might get extra money in this one here as well. You allow yourself to do some mistakes at a later stage and you might get a better seeding as well for the group stage there. So clearly you want to go through here. Still not all lost, but also a nice check, especially if you feel like, okay, I'm really good at the strong civilizations, not really off meta, then it will get tricky for the next week. And obviously with the next patch, no one knows what's coming our way. And lots of questions here. Abbasid Mirror will be super interesting. We will have to take a look. How many villagers are we sending on gold? Is it the approach with Wheelbarrow or are we only going for fresh foodstuffs? And how many TCs are we going to see? Yeah, and uh, it's, it's nice that you mentioned that those upcoming changes might kind of tweak the power order because so far we really don't get to see Delhi at all. They just keep getting banned. And I'm, I'm sure Salami's in the chat, especially right now, going, please, just, I, I can't believe it. I'm a, I'm a Delhi spammer, but right now I'm like, please nerf the Delhi so that they get through so that I can play them at some point in this 12-week long tournament. Oh, we'll have to see, though. So for the opening, neither player goes for a second scout. This is something expected, by the way. The Abbasids are some of the greediest mother duckers I've ever seen when it comes to scouting. They don't care what their opponents do. They only need one scout, nearly. That scout has one duty. Find out how many town centers the other Abbasid player has built. Where are the barriers? Where can I build my town centers? And after that, basically, oh, yeah. Yeah, only the duty at the front. Try to find out, okay, do you do three town centers as well? How are we approaching this? And it seems like need a player going for the very early wheelbarrow. Most of the time we're trying to squeeze in wheelbarrow on the way to feudal age and as we can see still 120 on gold uh, 120 gold per minute four villagers on gold feels like both are going for the economic approach no big surprise so far no i feel like when i look at this map it's almost like you can choose to either eat gold or eat food like eat berries because the southern side of the map is laced with almost every single berry patch and like the northeastern side is just all gold, gold and relics. And uh, you can't quite eat relics, but they will add a lot to your economy long term. But I think they're going to be ignored. Like I would say the moss aren't built very quickly by a lot of Abbasid players unless they carve up the areas with walls early on. I'm expecting a lot of aggression out with TC expansions towards the center lower side of the map just because there's what, seven berries? Oh, well, six. Six berries in the center there. Yeah, pretty crazy. And we might see a fight for that area, actually. By the way, both players now going for beer barrel, so no big surprises. And now, typically, the moment you get to an additional 125 gold, you just pull all your gold villages away, go onto stone, try to add those town centers, as you mentioned earlier. Cheaper production there, and therefore feels very, very reasonable. No and real, yeah, threat coming up next. This wait. is this is just what? The stone's pretty far out for I, Viper. I, I can, I can. The thing is, what people can't see, I still can see the webcam of KP, and he's just like crawling into the screen, trying to look at the minimap and trying to find stone spots for the Viper because Viper is not on stone. You saw that correctly. Yeah, like he's so far out, so he's a little bit paranoid. You don't have to be paranoid necessarily. I think it's more the efficiency play, right? Like if he was up against the Mongols or something, like, he might come and kill me. But he's up against the Abbasids, he's like, he might already be mining stone because it's closer to his base. And it, it, I think they got kind of even spawns actually, so no one got screwed over. It's just B was more efficient with the move onto stone. And you can already see that B, like he's got too much wood actually. His opening, his macro may have been slightly off. I think he needs to shift more people to stone to even this up. Be curious to see where he sits his first TC. I'm expecting it down near where the, de uh, the deer in the berry bush is, just south of the stone line, uh, next to the tree line, because there's a lot of value there. Like, look, look at that. Oh, that would be beautiful right there. Even secures the wood line as well. Just super important that we also build a mill next to the berries. Otherwise, it will stay at 250 food instead of the 500 food. So small investment for quite some gain. The question is, do we stay on stone? 
or do we transition away from it? Big question. Two town centers, three town centers. Felt like B pulled a lot of those villagers. And look at that. I think he pulled all of them. But next to the stone, so not unlikely that he will go for a third one. Who quite nice deer positioning around that town center. Mm -hmm. Well, if stone is needed, he'll have it. There's a lot nearby the gold as well. Like This is a pretty reasonable TC. It's not too far out in No Man's Land, and it's daisy chainable, right? That's an important detail. You want to unlock the Golden Age quicker, even more so in a mirror matchup, because a 10% increase in gathering efficiency for an extra minute of your opponent really adds up. And that's kind of maybe one of the frustrating things is Viper. I'm not sure if he'll be able to link that mining camp in without two houses uh, to the north, because it's, it's a little bit further out, so he might need to get... Yeah, that, that, ooh, if he's lucky, he can just about reach. But I think we'll need two houses to link that in. He does at least have the first Golden Age. But these small details matter. Like, if you're playing the same sieves and your opponent is able to more efficiently, like, daisy chain their base, they'll unlock a little bit quicker. And as you can see, those numbers on those are pretty juicy. Like, the 10% gather rate, the 15%, uh, the increased research speed, and then the final one that you get, the God tier one, is the production speed increased by 20%. is a huge boon each time you unlock those Golden Ages. Poggers, we see B going for an archer range now, while Viper is going for the 3 TC approach. So some more aggression, goes for the first camera archer. So the first, well, different approach here for sure. Now send some more villagers on to gold. Yeah, I, I actually feels love... like he will stay on two TCs. Yeah, I love this though. Like, I love the arrival of the Camel Archers in the meta. What I like is when players don't overinvest them though. B's quite good at this. He usually goes for two to four of the Camel Archers to harass and then sees if it's worth going for more. The way it's worth for going more, by the way, is if your opponent goes hard into, say, horse units, or if he goes into spearmen, then you get your justification. If your opponent is only producing archers in mass, it's probably not a good idea to produce camel archers in mass, because they have 3.75 tower range compared to five, and they're a lot more costly. So I really prefer like to limit the camel archer count similar to what we were talking about with Magadai for Mongols until you get Castle Age. Because then when you juice them up, they actually become quite an efficient unit to just build in zerging quantities. Most of the time the opponent is going for the Men at Arm crossbow spam though. And well, you need to go for quite some micro moves then. Not always the easiest thing. Viper will play the 3TC approach. Be likely to get up to Castle Age earlier. That will be quite a nice timing window for B to do some damage. Viper already knows. Okay, I will need to find some defense here. Goes for the tower. Look at that. Viper can actually build a tower without losing eight villagers. Wow. That turns out uh, it's a lot easier when it's right next to your base and you already have a big tower next to you. Like this, this little baby tower just being protected by daddy back in the town center. So we'll buffer him away. And this is kind of the frustrating thing is like now these outposts go down, your camel archers get limited value. And this is where you reach that point I was talking about. Don't build too many camel archers because they can't do anything now. They're a 175 health unit and that's raw HP. There's no reduction there. You don't get missile resistance or melee resistance on this unit. So it's actually not very cost efficient in terms of tanking and diving. Not to mention the fact his damage is pretty baby level at this stage. So just look for that castle age and looks like it's underway. This is a big window as well. If he switches into infantry, he can actually counter exactly what Viper's doing. Viper's spread himself a little bit greedy. And I do think in this matchup, the key to success is Castle Age. Like, his win condition for B is probably around the 14, 15 minute mark, breaching base with Siege. Viper is looking for a later timing around the 20 minutes. Well, there will be the barracks now being added. Viper instantly scouts it, so he knows exactly what's up. I think this is the moment where you even start to cancel villagers. And you have to go for like four archer ranges, full crossbow defense, and you have to accept that you will lose some villagers. So no production now. Textiles on the way to Castle Age, and then full crossbow defense. B, he will have a small timing. And remember, Abyssin Mirror, the only one where you can't advance faster than your opponent because no. you're so limited to the House of Wisdom. But that does mean that when Viper goes for his, he's going to be stuck waiting a long time as well, right? So that, that's kind of the, the counter argument is it kind of balances itself out a lot. But here we go. Like this situation, the camels, like I said, they can't die. They take too much damage. They do pure damage from the Arifar, the TCs. And as you said, Viper doesn't have villages. He has disposable berry gatherers, right? 25 food each. They pay for themselves off the two gathers, and he has three TCs building them. He can afford to lose probably 10, 20% of his economy in the next six minutes and not care. Traffic jam. Town center two. Traffic jam. Okay, now goes for the berries. Some of the left-hand side, so goes for those berries again. 
Exactly what he po pointed out earlier, that that area at the bottom is going to be important. First villager out here. Interesting. Oh, it's such Maybe a B play. Outpost. Yeah, he loves outposts. This this guy, he, he gets a shaking feeling, almost like withdrawal if he doesn't build outposts in these games. I see him do it so frequently on Lipany as well, actually. I think Lipany is the critical map he does at lawn. I do love it for the center here. Like, vision in this central forest is a big deal. We already talked about the paranoia in previous days of playing blind into that forest, right? It's the scariest thing imaginable. It's like you're in an episode of Scream. <laughs> um, Spearman now surviving the double wolf attack. First arch out. Could find the kill against the villager there. Spearman trying to scare those away. Scout is running away. And we see B indeed going for Man at Arm Crossbow. Viper likely to go for the same composition. Mainly crossbow for now. Villager lead at 7. Reasonable for the Viper. Yeah, but B needs to start enclosing this quickly. Because one of the limitations of what Viper has done is he will need to extend out very quickly, right? Whenever you TC boom like this, your initial resources drive quick. While mm. Bs will last a little bit longer. And right now, B doesn't have to care if they don't last longer because he's controlling the midfield. So it's critical that this outpost got denied and Vipers continue to do so. Like these archers are getting reasonable value in their trades. And they are drawing a lot of attention and it's giving info over. So now he sees what's happening. He sees the villager pool. Now after four villages, Viper understands that B is going to look to Zerg outpost around his base. And right now, actually, B instead is going to be building a mosque here to get his value out of all these villages. Meaning he'll be able to gather up all those relics nearby to the north. I can't believe I'm seeing a mosque drop in the stealth forest in the center of Lipany. What is going on here? That's such a B thing. He's just so crazy. He thinks outside the box. And Viper, I'm not even sure if he saw that one coming because it was in the stealth forest. Not obviously too easy to see there. Maybe didn't even care about his last archers. So Viper, yeah, he knows about the tower but doesn't know about much more. Built some outposts to get better vision himself. Knows, okay. I think I have a TC advantage over you. So I just need to defend and should be in a better spot. But look at that. Viper mainly going for crossbow and man at arms right now. Still no upgrade there. And now I think I want to see more upgrades out of him. And yeah, indeed. He uses his blacksmith after he got the reduction on all those times. Alright. I think I know what this is from B, Nelly. Yeah, being the astute age of Empire's Fall Connoisseur that I am, I've, I've cracked the code. B is prepping himself for Imperial Age Faith. This proxy mosque will allow him to build imams to convert his... I can't even finish the thought. <laughs> Actually, like, it, it's weird because I think Faith might be top three most underappreciated upgrades in the game. It basically allows you to have Age Empires 2 monks. They don't need to hold a relic anymore and can just convert a unit from long distance. Incredibly strong, but typically incredibly strong if the opponent has few extremely strong units. Not really the army composition we are going to see in an Abbasid mirror. I think Abbasid against Delhi, actually we should see more face than we actually do. Well, luckily the Delhi are banned every game, so uh, we can't <laughs> question your statement there, so we'll never see it. <laughs> um, but right now we're going to see some rights as Viper starts to wrap around, but these man arms are incredibly slow. For the moment, B will just look to use those imams to yoink all the relics. In fact, he might even get freebie wall lols if Viper isn't careful, but Viper, he sneaks on the north side as well. B, hemorrhaging villages, and he can't afford to do so, but it's two versus three TCs. To fight in the center, he does have the crossbow edge right now, the count over Viper, but so many outposts going down defensively for Viper, there's no easy way for B to now exploit this to move forward. Look at the village account. They're still dying. KP 25 ahead. They had rated so much and Viper is still reasonably holding over here. That's a massive advantage. Viper now just needs to make sure to constantly produce and he should have such a massive advantage. Oh, B with big losses. <laughs> he didn't even get the relic. He didn't even get the relic. He gets the one in the north, but the one in the south that he ran for, that's another cost, right? Because these lads aren't cheap. The abans cost 150 gold. And they aren't converting units yet. We're not at that stage in the game. So it's very pricey to just lose them for nothing like that. And he can't even get the sacred site. There's a single villager up here. Viper's just denying him there. So he's <laughs> not getting passive her. gold. He's being denied so much in this game by Viper. Oh, that villager, like, she was really angry just sitting there. And oh, maybe even that imam is getting denied more raids. Viper is so active. He's attacking at, like, four different angles right now. I've noticed Viper does this a lot on Lipany. He actually raids on the outskirts with static infantry. Not many players do this because it takes them too long. The whole logic is like, if you show units like this on the, the outskirts of the map, you're out of position. And not only can you be flanked, but your opponent can run at you through the center. 
Meanwhile, Viper doesn't care about this because he establishes Outpost down to slow down any assault from B. He's able to keep raiding like this, picking B apart, left, right, and center. And even when Viper does get spotted and there is a response coming, it's too displaced for him to do anything serious about it. And B, now so many villagers on the front in trouble. He tried to yoink the berries. And he's going to be pushed away. And that's so much idle time. Idle time you can't afford. Viper is about to go triple digits on the eco. Meanwhile, B is only halfway there at 50 villages as even more are dying. Viper is tearing him apart. He's raiding at three different spots right now. Left hand side at the top that we just saw and the right hand side another raid came in. While he is still pushing through the center, found villager kills there as well. It's four burning fires for B right now. He can't pull all of them out. And now a keep, how oh can no. he afford this? Oh yeah, right, he has 50 more villagers. Not only that, Anakin, he has the high ground. The keep on the high ground. And also keep in mind what we're approaching. That's a medical center. If he goes for the upgrade, he can just rejuvenate all of his troops on the front. He'll have the edge away from home over B and B will have no home to retreat to soon. His army count lower. His ability to stay in this game much lower. His economy is half that of Vipers. Viper is dominating this mirror matchup. Oh, and this is the moment where I want to pause and ask B, like, what do you think is Viper's population? And he would be like, yeah, I hope maybe 90, maybe 100. Uh-uh, my friend, it's 140 and only going up from here because he's pushing in your face. More mangonels rolling forward and B not really having the answers. I didn't realize that bees spoke English. I thought they just buzzed. But, you know, I'll, I'll take your word for it. If, he, if he, that's what he's going to say. Because right I now, I think it. all B can say is a bunch of censored words right now. Because this is frustrating. It's about to get worse, Piper. He doesn't go for the shot on the villagers. Instead, focus on the military side. Spring shot's coming out. And that Maganel, not sure if it wants to come or go. Uh, don't worry, though. It will go. Put a second Maganel in. And once again, B's not looking. <laughs> just about pulls back. But Dorothy there, poor little Dorothy napping in the uh, the berry patch did go down as a result and of that. And B with the early mosque, he was pushing for it so early on, like in the Mongol mirror. But Viper gets the plus one in relics. How did he do that? Just with the map control at the left hand side, yeah. guaranteeing himself the other two. It's the sacred site with the outpost near it, right? So it's denied the, the equity in the north for B, and B doesn't actually have troops to defend these imams anymore. He also doesn't have the gold to buy them. This proxy mask, although still not spotted by Viper, hasn't really done anything for B. He's, so He's not even ready. taking them back to the mosque right now. <laughs> oh my god, what? The, B, come on, just... Just yoink his villages. Just go for the wall or play into the keep, but he doesn't even want to try for it. Instead, he's like, no, he can't have the relic. If I can't have it, he can't have it. He's just going to run into the backside of the map where no one will get access to it. But Viper doesn't care. He's already three relics up. If B converts 20 villagers, yep. he is 30 behind. It's a start. And then if he converts another 20 <laughs> villagers... That's a good situation. <laughs> but, then, but then if he conververts another 20 villagers, he's still very much behind because Viper is ready ahead. for a tech And up. he's 10 ahead. Yeah, but here's the issue. Viper's about to be a whole tech ahead. Age up underway. Okay. Military wing. Zoom, zoom. Won't take him long. Ooh. You know, I'll, I'll give you it. Like, the strategy could work. Where is that imam, actually? Where has he gone? Did he build a second mosque back in his base? Yeah. Yeah, he did. So another 200 wood spent. And this relic, run, run, the, the, the monk run. needs to pick it up. He needs to get it out of harm's way. He's about to lose another sure. relic here. So he is, he's going and Viper doesn't see it. Oh, here run! We go. Here we go. Run, my no, friend. No, no. Don't run. Do the ballsy Convert. thing. Run towards Convert. them. You see that ball? Patience from B. No. No patience to kill though. Backs out of the fight. Understandable. Most mm -hmm. players aren't like me. They hear a lull, they walk away. You move in? Hell hey, yeah. That bored you? Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> like, what's that? Nice. You think you think my men would turn against me because you wallow off? <laughs> oh, they did. Uh... Okay. Springles behind this one as well. Should easily deal with that ram push. It's only one ram into the keep. Shouldn't really work. That's kind of the last stance here of the Viper. Seconds away from reaching... I, I think Imperial Age here as I don't well. Think this is and a if loss that ram game. goes down, you can't contest this keep at all anymore. And it's down. Oh, the Spruels. Oh, the Spruels, the hill! He's so close! 
and he's out of position. And he's spending time building the ram instead of defending the sprills. This trade is not good for B, and he can't afford it. Tech up complete. B still only getting 100 food per minute. If this army gets wiped, he's probably just going to wave the white flag. And I think it might. He's in trouble. He waves it right there. Everything turns white. White in his face as it's drained to color. And he's drained from this game. Viper will proceed through continuing that redemption bracket. Meanwhile, B will be eliminated here in the best of three. Ooh, Viper. And that was a tough set for him. Especially like the second one. Not the longest game. Not the most draining thing. And look at that. How Viper is just increasing in village account. Till he reaches <laughs> the 130 that he was aiming for. And B kept so small. Viper's wow. early raids. The, the one early castle, it's like 11, 12 minutes, just gave him such a big lead. And he was a town center ahead. Can I just highlight with that village account? It looks really pretty. Like, do you ever play Lemmings? It looks like a nice little path made for oh, your yeah. Lemmings. Oh, like, yeah. It's so oh, stable. Nice. Like, he yeah. never missed a beat on scaling his, his villages. Blup. And, Blup. you know, Blup. that, that could have looked like Blup. a death wolf of the Lemmings if B ever got the World Lore player on the back, but that never happened. And, and the issue with this last several minutes is he got starved off the berries. We arrived at that thing that was kind of preluded to earlier on the series, which is players don't want to transition to farms. It's too pricey, especially on maps where wood is limited. So instead, yeah. B is relying on berries. The moment you strap yourself in on those berry lines and deny him, there's nothing left on the map. And it means that when we look at the food, you can see how far ahead Viper is. Even if it wasn't for the extra TCs, he was actually gathering food. In those final minutes, I think B's income per minute on food went to 100 per minute. He was just about able to afford villages. That was it. And it's all because of the way that Viper plays proxy. These raids on the sides were phenomenal. Not enough players do this with man at arms and slow moving units. Viper understands that although they're slow and they might not kill many villagers, if they actually force an entire eco line away, they've still found their value. 